man, it is a beautiful October day here in Indianapolis. Usually this time of year, it's freezing cold. But instead, for this year's eight hours of Indianapolis for the SRO and for the Intercontinental GT Challenge, it is absolutely beautiful. You couldn't ask for much better. We got plenty of highlights, plenty of storylines to go over, so let's get into it. has certainly been an interesting couple of days leading up to the eight hours of Indianapolis. And I guess the biggest storyline going into this is we were almost missing two of our pro cars, Team WRT and Team Grupa M almost didn't make it here because of the port strikes right now going on in the East Coast. Now to add a little bit of insult to injury, right after both cars arrived, the strikes were called off, at least for now. Now. It has been an interesting couple of days for them because they weren't even sure if they were going to be able to race. They weren't even sure if they would have to go borrow someone else's car, wrap it up and just send it out to race. And that would have spelled major implications for this event overall because a lot of people come to see the factory cars from WRT and Grupa M and their Mercedes. And that would have been definitely a big disappointment because two entries did fall off the entry list to begin with before we even stepped foot in the facility. But luckily, both cars did make it. One car with Group M on Wednesday and with WRT, they had to rush that car out of the container when it got here just after noon on Thursday. But both cars made out. Both cars are going to be in the show tomorrow, and there will be quite a few happy fans here at the Speedway. Now, if you're a Porsche, fan, if you're a Porsche team member, if you're a Porsche driver, this place seems to be very good to you this year because, well, Porsche has pretty much dominated every session that we have seen so far through all of the testing, all of the free practices, and now through qualifying with one on the pole. It doesn't really mean that well for them in the race. They've typically struggled here on race day. However, so far, so good. And you have to be happy with that. And Corvette. We know that there's a lot of Corvette fans out there because, well, they represent us on the global stage. And Team DXDT and their two Corvette C8 Z06 GT3Rs, they've had a little bit of a troublesome weekend so far. Now, they have won the last eight Fanatec GT World Challenge America races, which would typically bode well for them here uh, going in. However, we don't use the GT World Challenge BOP. We use the IGTC BOP, and the Corvette's a little bit of an unknown car for that because it is in its first year, and that car has been trailing toward the end of the results so far this weekend. However, they did step it up a little bit in qualifying. They ended up about 15th, but we'll get to that here in the next segment. But if you're a Corvette fan, I wouldn't get your hopes up too high for this weekend, but they could pull one out of the hat. So without further ado, let's get into the results of qualifying and how the cars will line up going into tomorrow. And as previously mentioned, on pole position, the number 10 Herbert Motorsports Porsche with a 122.5, just a tenth off of the all-time GT3 track record here. In second position, a car that is going to have a lot of attention on it from IndyCar fans and was actually a big selling point for the Speedway for tomorrow's race. Alex Pillow in the number four Mercedes AMG uh, Lone Star Racing entry in third place, Wright Motorsports, a team that will have a very good shot at winning tomorrow and definitely a fan favorite from their IMSA competition. In fourth position, one of the BMW factory cars from Team WRT, fifth place, Triple Eight Racing in the number 888, imagine that, uh, Mercedes. In sixth position, the number 130, the Mercedes AMG Team Grupa M. Great run from Marl Engel to put that car into the top 10 and great recovery from their team after their struggles earlier on in the week. The Pro ST Racing number 28 ends up in seventh after a good run from Bill Oberlin and the other D Team WRT BMW in eighth. 
In ninth, another car that's going to have a lot of attention on it because of one Mr. Connor Daly, the number 99 Random Vandals Racing BMW, and in 10th place, the number 85 RS1 Porsche. In 11th place, the newly renamed 75 Express Racing Mercedes ends up, they were formerly known as Sun Energy One Racing. In 12th, the only Acura in the field featuring Gabby Chavez and Zach Veach, the number 93 Racers Edge Motorsports entry. In 13th, another IMSA stalwart with Turner Motorsports and their now 29 BMW M4 GT3 and GMG Racing and their 30, number 32 Porsche 911 GT3, one car that earlier in the week would have looked like it would have been a favorite four pole position, doesn't even make the pole shootout. The first of the Corvettes ends up 15th with DXDT Racing and the Pro-Am ST Racing BMW ends up in 16th. 17th, the first of the Ferraris from Team AF Corsa in the number 88 entry. And in 18th, we have the number 61 Earl Bamber Motorsports Porsche. 19th, Regulator Racing, the former DXDT team with Burton Lumber on the side ends up 19th. And 20th, Team Car Collection Motorsports sports and their Porsche. And that is going to wrap up our Friday coverage from the Indianapolis 8 Hour. If you like what you see, be sure to hit subscribe and follow us on all social media down below. And until Saturday night, this has been Mighty Mac and we will see you next time.